a cure for the itch. You're listening and you hear the title and perhaps you chuckle to yourself because you're wondering, what is Brother Battles talking about? What is this cure for the itch? What is this in reference to? I want to draw your attention to the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. And in the book of Luke, the 6th chapter, the 38th verse, it tells us, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met ye, Withal it shall be measured to you again. A cure for the itch. I praise God. Uh, in my few years of life on this earth, 38 years, I say few. It's just a few. I'm a young man. There's one lesson that God has sought to teach me, and he has repeated this lesson in my life over the last 38 years. And that is the lesson of giving. And I say that God has given me a repeated course in this class, if you will, because I'm always faced with situations where I am tested. That is T-E-S-T-E-D. God will place me in positions where he tests me to see, what will you do? How will you respond? Again, you're wondering, well, how will I respond to what? Well, allow me to answer that question. When I'm driving up and down the road, I used to be a truck driver. I've told you guys that before, before I lost my leg, I used to drive trucks, 18-wheelers. And I would run into different people in truck stops. I'd run into people, perhaps sometimes even at the locations, the factories where I was hauling my loads to. But even now, as uh, a regular civilian, if I would say it that way, I run into panhandlers all the time. Panhandler or somebody who's less fortunate than myself. And I can think of a few examples. I can think of a few times where the lesson of Luke chapter 6 verse 38 comes to light. Where this cure for an itch actually came into reality. You see, I'm a poor man. And when I say poor, that means simply that I am not wealthy. I don't have the riches that an individual that perhaps uh, one other than myself or unlike myself would possess. I don't have a bank account. I don't have uh, a business where there are thousands of dollars pouring in on a weekly or monthly basis. I'm a simple person. And in fact, since I've been on dialysis the last 14 weeks, I have not even been working. But God has been taking care of me, and I think that the reason is because he has shown me the cure for the itch. You know, the itch, in my mind, is the fact that there comes a time when we don't have what it is that perhaps we need. That's the itch. We may be low on funds, and something may come up, and we may look at our financial situation and realize, oh boy, I'm delinquent, or I'm in need. I, I don't have what I need. There's a lack. But I have noticed that every time I take the time to bless someone else, even if I don't have anything, God always sneaks a blessing into my hand. Again, Luke chapter 6, verse 38 tells me, To give, and it shall be given unto you. And it doesn't just say that you will give or that when you give, you will get back. It says you will receive it back, but in good measure. In good measure, pressed down and shaken together. That is to suggest that what you have put out into the universe, if you will, when you did give, will come back to you even greater than what you gave. And I have seen this happen time and time again. The year was 2018. I remember I had $20 in my bank account, and at this time I was living with my ex-wife and my two children. I had a brother, a spiritual brother, lives in Huntsville, Alabama. And he and I would talk every two days, and we would pray. In fact, we have continued that tradition now for nearly four years, and he has been a great 
help to me spiritually, praying together, talking together, socializing, encouraging one another. I mean, that's brotherhood. That's fellowship. And that's the kind of relationship that he and I have. And I remember he mentioned to me that he and his wife, at the time, they just had one child and then another one on the way. He mentioned that they were in dire straits. And I think you guys know what that means. He had an itch that needed to be scratched. The brother was broke. (laughs) And I remember him sharing that in a vicarious way. He didn't say it all directly. He said it kind of in passing. But I'm a listening man, and I paid attention, and I said, hmm, I want to bless this brother, but I don't have much. I had $20 to my name, literally. And, of course, we have this technology now called Cash App. I'm sure we have all heard of it. I had that $20, and I said, you know what, I'm going to send this over to my brother. And I did. I Cash Apped him that last $20, and I went to work at the time. I was working for the Kia plant. Uh, At the Kia plant, basically, my job was to move the brand new Kias off of the lot once they came in off of the trains from Mexico. And I remember the day I gave him that $20, and I prayed and said, Well, Lord, you know, this is all I have. I hope that you multiply it on his behalf so that he could, you know, do what he needs to do. And I remember that same day when I gave him this $20, my ex-wife, she comes to me and she asked me for some funds. And I told her, I said, well, dear, you know, I, I, I don't have anything. I said, uh, we had just a $20 uh, bit of change. And I sent that to brother and sister so-and-so. And when I told her that, she got livid. She was like, are you out of your mind? How are you going to send the last $20 we got to some stranger, blank, 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 blah, 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 blah. And she pretty much ripped me a new one. And one of you right now is laughing and smiling and saying, yeah, that's the mistake of a young fella. you you just 38 years old. At the time, I was 35. And uh, you're probably thinking to yourself, yep, that's what you get. You didn't consult your wife. Boy, you're going to learn. Yeah, I learned. And uh, she, you know, sent me to work with a sore backside, if you will, meaning my conscience was soiled. And I was feeling down. I was like, well, Lord, did I do the right thing? I gave this brother the last monies that we had. I said, I know that, you know, you can multiply things. You said in Luke chapter 6, 38, that if I give, it'll be given back to me. And that's not why I gave, looking to receive. But Lord, you said that if I give, you take care of me. So I went to work that next day. Again, like I told you, I worked for Kia. And as I'm unloading the vehicles from the trains, these vehicles, these brand new Kias and Hyundais come on the trains from New Mexico or Mexico rather. And it was my job to process them, meaning I took them to a particular location on the property so that they could be processed and prepared for sale. And, uh, I hopped in one of them. My job was also to inspect them, to make sure there were no scratches, to make sure as I looked on the inside that they weren't uh, victims of theft. Because in Mexico, prior to the cars coming to the U.S., a lot of times thieves would break into them and steal the stereo system and different things of that nature. And so it was my job to make sure that all the components were in place. And I'm inspecting these vehicles this day. I look into one of the vehicles, and as I hopped in, lo and behold, now this is the exact next day, the very next day after I sent this brother my last $20. Lo and behold, as I'm inspecting one of the cars, I hop in, and on the seat are three crisp $20 bills. Now I look around, I said, hold up, (laughs) I said, I know this this, this got to be a trick, you know. You've seen that video or that show uh, where people who own businesses will dress up as normal employees and they'll work alongside their employees and uh, the individual who they're working with has no idea that they're working alongside the owner of the company. It's a funny show. I remember watching it a few times. Um, and I was beginning to wonder if I was uh, in that situation beginning to wonder if maybe someone was playing a trick on me. Well, 
what did I do? Did I grab the money and just throw it in my pocket and say, yeah, you know, this is my blessing. God, you took care of me. No, I went and found my boss. I went to my supervisor and I said, look, you know, I found some funds. And I told my supervisor, I said, look, I found some some funds. No, actually, I did tell my supervisor and I told her, please, uh, for security's sake, don't tell the crew how much it was found. Just simply question them as to whether or not if they perhaps had lost this these funds. And not only did I go to my supervisor, but there were other segments, uh, other companies on that property uh, doing different uh, functions. So I went to them as well. And I asked them, I said, look, please tell me, did any of your workers misplace some funds? And I told the supervisors of each of those uh, different companies what had happened and how much. And they said, well, look, we'll do some investigation. We'll find out whether or not anyone here on the property has misplaced these funds. And I said, okay, fine. At the end of the day, each supervisor eventually came back and reported to me that no one in their crew had lost this money. And then my supervisor said, well, Andre, uh, no one in our crew has misplaced these funds. You can go ahead and take the money home. And to my delight, I went home with $60. And I remember giving my wife at the time 40 of it. And I kept 20 And when I got home and gave her the $40, she looked at me and she said, where'd you get this? And I said, I told you that God will take care of you. Because once she had argued with me with, over the fact that I had given this money, that was the only thing I could think to say to her. I remember when she told me how silly I was for giving our last $20 to this brother, I said, God will provide. I said, God will take care of us because we did a good thing. And I remember her kind of chuckling and laughing like, yeah, whatever. You're trying to uh, quiet your conscience for doing something stupid. And I remember that's what she told me. In reality, she's telling me that I was stupid for giving. Often the devil will make us think this. Well, I can't afford to help this person or I can't afford to be kind. I can't afford to smile at a stranger. I can't afford to say hello. I can't afford to be compassionate or to be considerate of someone else because when I look at my situation, all of the resources I have, I need. And the devil will tempt us into thinking that. In fact, the devil will tempt us into thinking that when we do do for others, that it's a sign of weakness, that somehow people are going to take advantage of us because we're kind. Or we'll look at the panhandler, somebody on the side of the street or the highway, and we'll we'll come up with an excuse. Well, they're probably on drugs anyway. Or, you know, hey, they made some poor decisions. That's why they're out here like that. And then we forget the scriptures in Matthew where Jesus says to us that we were that at one time he was sick and we didn't come and see him. At one time he was naked, we didn't clothe him. At one time he was poor, we didn't give him nothing to eat. At one time he needed water and we didn't give him nothing to drink. And then there'll be a crowd of people that will say to Jesus, well, when did we see you in this condition and didn't do, do X, Y, Z? And Jesus will say, because I had others around, my people, who you overlooked. And when you didn't do for them, you didn't do for me. My encouragement to you this morning is Luke six thirty eight again, and that is give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met ye with all, it shall be measured to you again. The cure for the itch is simply giving. No, I'm not rich. And every time, every time I have given, God has returned a blessing back to me without fail. I have never seen him fail in this. I have never had an experience where I gave, whether it was from my last or either from a position of increase, and then I never received. It never has happened to me in my life. Every time I give, it may not happen immediately. It may not be by way of a miracle like the $60 that popped up in the vehicle at Kia uh, when I was working there two years ago, it may not be some other miraculous situation, but I know what a miracle is. 
And a miracle is a situation where when I am lacking, God finds a way to put what I need in my hands without me even realizing or understanding how he did it. That's a miracle. And I've seen him perform these miracles repeatedly. I'm going to share with you this last story and I'm going to let you go. Last night, my wife and I dropped my children to their mother. You see, their mother and her mom are in the Dallas, Texas area, relaxing here this weekend or this beginning of this week. And uh, they gave me and my wife now opportunity to pick up the kids and to spend some time. But we had to drop them back off last night as they're not spending the night with us in the hotel. Uh, and that's just the way it is. They're, they're, they're spending time with us during the day. We go back and drop them back off to their mom. At, in the evening time, as I was dropping them off last night, I noticed a young lady in the middle of the median here in the Dallas, Texas area, a very, very skinny young lady. I mean, she looked like she hadn't eaten a meal in a month. This young lady was scrawny. And I, I'm the kind of person, I just, I, you know, I pray every day that Lord Translate my spiritual walk with you into kindness for others. Please, don't let my spiritual walk consist of selfishness or simply me collecting data from the Bible and hoarding this data and considering myself righteous because I know truth. Let the things that I know equate into acts of kindness. And I saw this young lady and my heart immediately ran out to her in compassion, I didn't have any cash on me. So I asked my wife, I said, do you have any cash? I'll give it back to you. I'll stop and grab a, f a few dollars and whatever you give me to give to this girl, I'll give it back to you. But in the position that we were in, when I saw her, we were in the middle of traffic and I couldn't get her attention. And so I went and dropped my kids off to their mother. And I prayed. I said, Lord, when we come back through here, please let this young lady still be sitting out here. I mean, the child looked, I mean, she looked desperate. The way she was dressed, the way she looked, looks like she hadn't taken a shower in a long time, but you could tell she's a young girl. She's not an aged individual. I don't know her situation. I'm not going to assume that she's on drugs. I, I don't know her situation. I'm not going to assume the worst. I'm going to assume that this is a human being that's on the side of the street and God has placed a test, a T-E-S-T, -E in my path, and it is up to me now to make a decision what I'm going to do. And so on our way back, I prayed. I said, Lord, please, I hope this young lady's sitting there. And lo and behold, she was gone. And I felt kind of sold in my conscience. I was like, man, maybe I should have found a way to give her what I had when I first saw her. Because another fella had jumped in that position, a uh, busy intersection. And uh, he was panhandling. So the few dollars I was going to give her, I gave to him. And I started to drive off, and as soon as I'm driving off, I kind of put my head down. I'm a little, uh, feeling a little down about having missed this young lady. And as soon as I put my head down, I look to my left, I see the young lady walking on the side of the street, right in front of the Whataburger uh, parking lot. And Whataburger, if you don't know, is a food chain, it's a restaurant, a burger joint. And I said, oh, man, there she goes. And I mean, with excitement, like I'd seen a lost friend, I did a U-turn in the street and went back down to where this young lady was. And I honked my horn. And I got her attention. I said, hey. And she turned around and she looked. And she said, yes. I said, weren't you just standing here about 15, 20 minutes ago? She said, yeah, I was standing over here. I said, you know, I didn't ask her, her business. I didn't ask her what was her situation. I didn't interview her to make sure she was clean. I didn't say, let me make sure you ain't on drugs before I give you this money, uh, young lady. I, no. Jesus didn't ask me in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, that did I interview the person to make sure that they weren't on drugs before I blessed them. He said, did you do? So I looked at the young lady and she, she smiled. I said, well, ma'am, I said, I really don't have any cash. And I was, it was the honest truth. The money I had gotten from my wife, I had given to somebody else. I said, but are you hungry? I look for opportunities to give. I don't make an excuse not to give. 
And she looked back. She said, yes. I mean, the way she said she was hungry, the way that she responded by saying yes, I could tell, yeah, this young lady's hungry for real. I said, you wait right here. My wife and I, we went to that Whataburger drive through and we ordered food for her, and there was another person that she was with. We ordered food for them both and gave them that food. And, you know, all I could help but thinking was that at the end of the day, I entertained an angel. Why? Because the Bible says that when we entertain strangers, we entertain angels unaware. And even if she was just a flesh and blood human being, if she was nobody special, she, was, she wasn't uh, the angel Gabriel or some other high-ranking angel, she was a human being, somebody that is my friend and neighbor on this earth. And it was my privilege and duty and honor to give her that little bit of food last night. What is the cure for the itch? The cure for the itch, the cure for our brokenness when it comes to our financial woes is to give to others. Not to hoard, not to be selfish. Oh, well, I I can't afford to help this brother. I can't afford to help this sister. It's not in my budget. It ain't never in mine. I'm going to just be real. But God always finds a way to increase me. And he always finds a way to put a smile on my face when I see that the needs of others are met through the little things that I'm able to do for them. The cure for the itch is to give. Father in heaven, we ask that you please bless us. I pray that everything that we've ever done in service to others would be multiplied. The things that we've given, the love, the affection that we've shown, the time and the attention. I pray, Father God, that as you've told us, that freely we receive, to freely give, that we would truly put you to test. And we would prove you. We know there are scriptures in the Bible that talk about giving and then receiving. We know when it comes to tithes and offering, that if we give in accordance to what we've been asked to do, that you will bless us in accordance to our faith. It's the same principle when we consider giving to others. You will take care of us. And I've seen you do it time and time again. I pray that this simplistic lesson would not fall on deaf ears. And I pray that our Christian experience would consist more of just finding out doctrine, but that it would consist of acts of kindness. This is my prayer, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.